Welcome back to another video and like I've been saying that this year is going to be a good year for the smart home and 2023 has been a great start. As we have saw already Matter has been released and is slowly rolling out over different manufacturers and products and I got my first plug set up the other day using the Eve Energy and Alexa and it's been working pretty good. Now there are going to be some caveats here and there and there are going to be some ups and downs as companies start to learn how Matter works fully and adapt it into their own ecosystems. As it is February, I am currently waiting for Aquara to release their Matter update as it is slowly rolling out over the next four to six weeks. And I'm super excited to try that out as that's going to make over 40 different devices Matter compatible. So I'll be able to connect them with my Google Home, Alexa Home and Apple Home seamlessly fingers crossed let's hope it goes to plan but that is not what we're here for as you can tell by this title it's finally time to talk about the brand new homepod yes that is correct if you didn't see our video from talking about the announcement of the homepod apple finally revived the homepod in 2023 and it's brought along some nice new features including a removable power cable something which many of us wanted on their original homepod so in this video we're going to be having a look at the new homepod and the new features compared to the original HomePod, we're going to be talking about the use cases and if you should get one. Anyway, let's take a look at the brand new HomePod for 2023. And here it is. This is the brand new HomePod. If only that was true. This is the original HomePod and here is the new one. As you can tell, they do look very similar, but there are some differences which we're gonna talk about in this video. And you can probably already tell because this one is very dirty and this one is brand new and very clean. Yes, I was gonna get the black one, but no, it wasn't in stock. So we went for the white one as the original HomePod, which I have right here, was the first one I actually bought on release date in 2018. So let's see what's new with this new HomePod and if you should buy one or if you should upgrade. So let's take a look. Apple announced the original HomePod back in 2018 and it was a failing success to many as it was compared highly to Alexa and Google Assistants at the time, which were 30 pound smart speakers which did okay at everything, but not great at everything. And so reviewers didn't really know where to place the HomePod. Over time, the HomePod did receive some new features, including Dolby Atmos support and also home theater support, as long as you had an Apple TV 4K. Along with the announcement of the HomePod Mini, the HomePod got those features and then shortly after was discontinued. This was down to the fact that the HomePod was originally released at £349 and soon later then it had a price reduced to £299. Not long after that, the HomePod Mini was doing very well in sales as it did only start at £99, brought most of the same features minus the Dolby Atmos and spatial awareness that the original HomePod had and crammed it all down into a nice portable size of £99 worth of a speaker. The original HomePod sales were that bad, unfortunately, that when they discontinued the HomePod, units were still shipping that were produced in 2017. Now, if you take a look at the communities that loved the HomePod and the people that screamed about the sadness of it being discontinued, me being one of them, then you'll know the HomePod was great for many for three different things. It was a great theater setup for speakers and creating a more immersive sound without having to spend thousands of pounds on a 7.1 or 5.1 surround sound system. It also meant that I could have multi-room audio with AirPlay 2, which is built in to all Apple devices, so I could listen and stream my music to any one of my rooms fairly well with decent sound quality. And number three, I had Siri to hand at all times to control my smart home. And I say smart home is because the HomePod in my eyes was made to be one of those smart speakers and a central hub for your home more than being an intelligent assistant like Google or Alexa, which isn't so smart in my opinion, but yeah. There have been rumors all over the internet that Apple was going to release a brand new HomePod and Mark Gurman said that it was going to be slightly tweaked and updated. And that is the one that we've got now in 2023. 
Apple announced the HomePod the day after announcing the new MacBook M2s, and it got a nice little intro video showcasing some of the new features. The brand new HomePod takes some features from the HomePod Mini, which is probably Apple's most successful speaker at this point, and also add some new features for both it and the HomePod Mini that are either available today or coming in the future. But first, let's talk about what's new with the HomePod. The new HomePod now acts as a thread border router for Matter accessories. Unlike the original HomePod that was only compatible with Matter over Wi-Fi, now with the new HomePod, just like the HomePod Mini, it can act as a thread border router, meaning any thread devices you have and connect to Apple HomeKit or Matter will now be able to connect to the new HomePod. Inside the HomePod, what is processing everything is the S7 chip. Apple has gone from the A5 chip in the original HomePod to the S7 chip for the new one. The S range chips are usually what's used in an Apple Watch, but as this is just a smart speaker not doing any heavy tasks, this apparently to Apple is going to be enough to power and deliver all of the features in the new HomePod. The HomePod also takes the U1 chip from the HomePod mini, allowing for that handoff feature where when you bring your iPhone close to the speaker, it will either hand off the music to the speaker or bring it back to your phone, which is really cool for if you're walking around your house and you want to have your music follow you around, something which was announced and released for the HomePod mini. You then also have, to our surprise, a humidity and temperature sensor, which is also available with iOS 16.3 to the original HomePod minis. Yes, that is correct. The original HomePod mini does have a temperature and humidity sensor, which has been sat idle since release date. Now, Apple has used iOS 16.3 to expose that sensor in the original Mini and the brand new HomePod to HomeKit. This means you'll be able to run automations and control your smart heating from using the built-in temperature and humidity sensors within your HomePods. And a feature which is going to come out later this spring, again also available for the Mini and for the new HomePod, is sound recognition. So if there is a carbon monoxide alarm or a fire alarm being detected, then the HomePod will send a notification to your phone, alerting you that there could be an emergency in your home. But keep in mind, don't rely on this as a way to determine whether there is an actual emergency, as it is just a feature that is there to help and not actually be something to be relied on. So make sure you do have your batteries in your fire alarm and always check to make sure that they're fully working. You might have also saw that Apple has downgraded the Wi-Fi chip in this, but again, it's a smart speaker, so why are you connecting it to, to actually need some really powerful Wi-Fi chip. Apple says that it's going to be good enough for lossless and Dolby Atmos content, so there's nothing to worry about in terms of the speaker. And the HomePod Mini uses this exact same Wi-Fi chip, and I haven't had any problem with mine, so I'm pretty sure you won't have a problem with it in the new HomePod. In terms of the speakers in the brand new HomePod, you are going to find a four inch woofer and five array of tweeters. In the original HomePod, there was seven, but Apple does say with its processing with the S7 chip that you won't tell any difference. It also has four built-in microphones, which have the same beam forming feature as the original HomePod and a gyroscope built in, which means when you move the HomePod into a new location, it will automatically retune the HomePod to play the best possible sound. So no matter where you place this HomePod, it will produce room filling sound. And if you add two HomePods and put them into stereo pair, then you'll widen that sound stage. And if you're listening to Dolby Atmos content, then the speaker will mimic and bounce off the sound waves into your ears. For the colors, it is not as fun as the HomePod mini. You get a new midnight color, which is basically the bluer, darker version of what space gray is, and you get the plain old white. As you saw from my intro, my white did go a little bit bad, but I did look after it compared to what I saw on Twitter. Yeah. I saw that HomePod, it was pretty day. So yes, I have gone with the white one for my first HomePod for the second generation, but for the living room, when we finished decorating, as you can probably tell by my thermostat, which is hanging off the wall, we are currently redecorating. So when we have all that finished, then I'm gonna get for myself two black HomePods to go into my theater setup. And yeah, hopefully it will look pretty sweet and you should subscribe to look out for that video when it comes out later this year. The new HomePod also supports all of the great features that come with the original HomePod, including the Dolby Atmos support, the theater setup mode with Apple TV 4K, allowing you to connect this to your TV and have the audio come from what your TV is playing. This now also works with eARC compatible TVs, allowing you to play the audio from your TV or, or anything else connected to your TV via HDMI can now play through your HomePods. 
And I know I've already said this at the very start of the opening of this video, but Apple also included a removable power cable. They listened to us. I'm so happy. Apple finally listened to its users and included a removable power cable. And so we can actually put the speaker in very awkward places and not have to worry about voiding our warranty or breaking the device itself. Yes, that is right. Apple has now included a more easy, user-friendly, removable power cable to the point where inside of the box, it actually comes already removed. So users know that it can be removed. As this uses the same two pin plug thing that you can find on your PS5 or any AC adapter lying around your home, this is perfect because it means you will be able to expand the wire if you need to get the HomePod to a place that it might not reach. And here in the UK, they did actually shorten the power cable that comes in the box, which was just a little bit annoying. But again, I now I have the option to expand it. So why am I complaining? Thank you, Apple. All in all, I am super happy the HomePod is back. And now is the thing of, should you buy it? And this is where I might get a little bit controversial. The original HomePod reviews were absolutely dire, as many people didn't know where to place the HomePod. Doesn't happen with HomePod yet. You can't order products online, you can't order food online, you can't call an Uber or a Lyft with it, you can't have it read calendar events or set any calendar events. Play 2 comes out sometime this year. You can only use one speaker at a time. You can't have multiple speakers going at once. You can't use it as a Bluetooth speaker at all. And fair enough for that time, the HomePod was too soon for the world to accept and acknowledge in their homes who they charge 300 pounds for a smart speaker when you have the Sonos, which is also near enough 300 pounds and has a microphone and you can connect Alexa and Google Assistant to it, but it doesn't do it that well because it is just the speaker. The HomePod, like I said, from the community of HomeKit is a great speaker for free things. For your home entertainment system, multi-room audio, and Siri support for being able to control your smart home and being a connected hub. If you're someone that doesn't have a fully fledged out HomeKit home, or you're never going to include a smart bulb into your home, then the Siri functionality on the speaker isn't going to be the best one out there. I'm not going to lie. Google does an amazing job at being able to ask reliable questions and be able to have a normal conversation. While Apple might improve this in the future, Siri is great for doing the things that you want it to do, such as turning on my lights, checking the time, asking what's on my calendar, knowing the weather and the directions to and from my locations, which I've automatically inputted into my phone because I'm part of the Apple ecosystem. I have an Apple TV in every room and I have HomePod minis, so I don't have to buy a sound bar for every room to have great sounding audio. It is probably a lot cheaper for me to get a HomePod mini in every room and connect it to the Apple TV than for me to buy great sound speakers for my own personal liking. Again, sound is very different to individuals and our ears all work slightly differently. In my opinion, the HomePod is a great sounding device and it works perfectly for those people which aren't highly into home entertainment but want to have something better without breaking the bank. Yes, there might be other products on the market which can do even one of those things a lot better, but if you are a simplistic Apple user and you want everything to just work out the box and be good at being wireless and mess free, then the HomePod is one of those speakers for you. And if it's not the new HomePod, then the HomePod mini is also a great option. At £99, it does offer most of the same great features, minus Dolby Atmos and the beamforming microphones. In terms of listening to music, this is one that people keep missing in these reviews as well, and I hate to call it out, but it is not Apple's fault that Spotify isn't natively compatible with Siri on the HomePod. And what I mean by this is when I say the magic words, play this song, then it will start playing through Apple Music as the default. Apple has allowed a third party API to work with the HomePod for third party music platforms to access Siri so you can change this in the home app setting. One of the few companies not to use this API unfortunately has been Spotify. So again, it does mean that with native Siri control on the speaker, you can't ask it to play stuff from Spotify. But don't let this stop you as most of the time in my experience when playing music from the HomePod, you're gonna connect your phone first anyway. And via AirPlay 2, it's possible to play your entire Spotify library or any audio from your phone in that matter to the smart speaker. So if you are a Spotify lover, then this HomePod can still work for you. Just keep in mind that when using Siri to start your music playback, then you're not gonna get support for Spotify natively. Other streaming platforms like Pandora and Amazon Music do work with the HomePod via the API, so you'll be able to ask Siri to play on those platforms as well. But yes, that is a look at the brand new HomePod. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please let me know what you think. Are you happy to see the HomePod back? 
Is it something you're going to pick up? And if so, how many? I remember when the HomePod Mini come out and all of the HomeKit community has just went wild, being like, I'm buying six, I found five on sale, I've got two for every room. It's becoming the same thing. But yeah, that is it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And if you did like this video, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and share this video as it really does help our channel grow. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you never miss another video from us again. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.